case that begins with immediate pressure. Then things get complicated. So the crux of the race comes down to one of the few indisputable facts in track and field, which is no person on the planet can run the 400 all out from start to finish. The reason why it comes down to how the body creates energy. And the way it does so during the 400 is the most painful. So here's an easy way to think about it. You have three energy systems to power movement. They work on a continuum and there are individual differences. But no matter what, when intensity's high, energy comes at a price. So during the first 50 meters of the race, the body uses immediate energy stored as ATP and phosphocreatine. Think of this as your body's version of a short, sharp rocket booster. So this energy is rapid and intense, but it's very short-lived. It's usually expended within the first six to 10 seconds. So at the start of the race, athletes unleash it, pushing from 90 to 100% of their max right from the gun. After that initial burst, runners transition into a phase that sustains a high, but not maximum speed. So now we're onto the second energy source called anaerobic glycolysis. As this fuel's created, we've got lactate and the associated hydrogen ions, which to simplify, we're just gonna refer to as lactic acid. This byproduct causes the muscles to burn and impairs function. If this were a shorter sprint, like the 100 or 200, this isn't a concern. The race is over well before lactic acid becomes a factor. This is where strategy in the 400 is paramount. If you go too fast too soon, you're gonna accumulate lactic acid well beyond what the body can handle. You can't ease off that much either. So you gotta maintain a near peak pace without tapping out your reserves. Because at the end of this phase, you're only halfway there. This is where the third energy system comes into play. It's a shift from quick but limited energy production to a more efficient process that can support prolonged endurance. But again, there's a catch. Aerobic energy isn't created nearly as fast, which means there's a looming energy crisis on the horizon. Energy demand will soon outstrip supply, setting the stage for an intense showdown of physiological limits in the final phase of the race. This is what it all comes down to. The fourth stage is where chaos prevails, especially if you didn't get the other phases right. But even if you did get the other phases right, the final stretch is still hell on earth. Just ask anyone who's run the race, as this Redditor did. At this point, the body is on the brink of exhausting its anaerobic energy reserves. The body attempts to fill the energy gaps with more aerobic energy, but because it's a slower process, it struggles to match the immediate and intense demands of the sprint. And the rising acidity within the muscles not only induces agonizing pain, but it's also starting to impair muscular function. This is where the true mental battle begins to unfold. Not one of tactics, but one of guts. The final stretch is not just a race against competitors. It's a duel between an athlete's drive to succeed and the overwhelming desire to ease the pain. This crucible, this intense showdown of heart and mind is what defines the essence of the 400 meters.